Hey guys, just want to let you know some thoughts about the new uh, Batman movie that just came out. It's a big topic, everyone's thinking about it. And just want to say, I appreciate the bold choices they made. I thought, this is a spoil we're getting into spoilers now, so if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go see it, because it's once in a lifetime. So anyway, I thought the decision to have uh, Batman uh, die in the first five minutes was really innovative. It was a very reflexive, reflective movie, because after Batman dies, the city of Gotham now has to contemplate uh, how to keep their citizens safe. And it's more, and it's kind of deeper than that, because they, like, they can consider, was it ever a good thing that they had Batman? Was it ever a good thing that the city was reliant on one rich guy uh, in, in a Bats costume beating everybody up? Is that really the way the city ought to be run? In fact, is it, is it even a good thing that there's no more Batman? I mean, after all, Batman's fundamentally unaccountable. He has He's a vigilante. Is the city of Gotham better without him? And these are questions that are examined uh, in great depth and detail throughout the course of the movie in, in a variety of ways. Uh, and despite this, despite how I mean, it sound like it, they sit around talking the time, they really don't. There's still plenty of action there are a lot of great scenes because now we just have like normal guys, like uh, you know Commissioner Gordon and his dudes. But they gotta go up against the bad guys just themselves now. They gotta like take Bane on and people like that. But they don't have any like superpowers. They're just like gotta use their mind and their wits and just take these guys down. And it's really incredible. It's very, it's very exciting. There's a particularly good part where they're fighting a dead shot and they're leading him around in a warehouse. And they gotta and what they have to do is they lure him into like a warehouse, a tall. Uh, tall aisle so they can like go sneak up on him and I thought it was great because like you know Batman would have just like punched in the fucking face and it would have been over but no because they can't do that because they don't have any powers and the uh, the climax of the movie is when uh, Robin decides he's going to take Batman's place but Commissioner Gordon now recognizing the city of Gotham doesn't need uh, unaccountable and uh, dangerous people like Batman running around he arrests Robin so that their Gotham won't have a Batman and then, at the end of the movie, we see them deinstalling the, uh, what the fuck you call it? <laughs> deinstalling the bat, deinstalling the bat light, or whatever you call it, the, the bat signal? I don't, I cannot believe I can't remember the name of that. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Also, I like the decision to use, to reuse the 1960s Batman costumes. It really, it really makes us consider, like, how deeply ingrained these, like, arc, like, uh, people, like, something like Batman is. You know, we, we're all so used to, we all grew up with it, we're all used to the idea that, like, well, if Batman was real, it would be great. And this movie reminds us how old that idea is, how long Batman's been in our TV, how long we've been watching him as kids, because we got the 60s costumes back in the 60s cars. Now, uh, it also just kind of plays into the general setting. It's kind of a... It's a sort of surreal setting. It's sort of a hodgepodge of different time periods. You know, Batman dressed up like it's the 60s, and most of the cars, you know, some of them look like they're from, like, the 30s, but some of them look like they're from, like, the 70s or the 80s. It's very dislocating. And uh, it's a very dislocating story in general, so I think it works pretty well. And all I say is, if Hollywood keeps making up movies this original, I'm going to keep watching, and I hope you will too.